Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning. You're listening to a Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla, and I'm so excited to have you here with us. But before we jump into the goodness of the word, let's take a moment and pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for another wonderful opportunity to grow in our maturity, Lord, in our relationship with you, Lord. We ask that you'll give us spiritual understanding and wisdom so that we can apply your truth accurately, Lord, to our lives, Lord, and we can succeed in all that you have put before us, Lord. We thank you for the joy that you put into this morning's episode, Lord, and we thank you for the fellowship that we have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us as we Continue to dive into the book of Hebrews. This morning, we are picking it up in chapter 3. So could I get a volunteer to read the first six verses, please? I'll read those. All right, honey, honey. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterwards. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Amen. All right, there's a lot in there. So we're going to open up the floor and give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And, of course, to ask any questions you might have. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. Okay, so... Um, we mentioned in the last episode about the double reference that was going on here to Jesus. He was faithful in his mission and his ministry here on the earth, and he is faithful as a shepherd over us. And I'd like to read um, John 10 real quick. I'm just going to read a few verses because all 18 would take a little bit. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the shepherd and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. And skipping down to uh, verse 11 and... Through 16. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring in, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So, the thing to look at here is when the Lord Jesus came to fulfill his ministry, he was to preach the gospel, the coming of the kingdom, for the repentance and the remission of sins. And when he ascended back to heaven, he was to send the Holy Spirit who was to guide us in all truth and show us things to come shepherding us back to the father and it was a a a joint um a tag team mission if you will Mm -hmm. so now it's the holy spirit's turn and because the lord jesus was faithful and what god had given him now he was able to inherit that name that was above every other name that is not was Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is above every other name that at that name every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord 
And he won all of those things because of his faithfulness. And we, because we are his sheep and we're his joint heirs in Christ Jesus and brothers and sisters, we're able to partake in some of that inheritance as well. But that also comes with a responsibility, like an older child. There are benefits to being the oldest, but there are also responsibilities. So now because we are children of God, we get the benefits of what our older sibling Jesus did for us, but there's also responsibility. And our responsibility is to conduct business until he comes back. And you can read that in Luke 19 verses 11 through 27, or you can read it in Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30, talking about the talents and the master who went on a mission. He went to go receive a kingdom, gave everybody talents and essentially asked for an account when he came back. Mm hmm. So because we are called to be conformed to the image and likeness of Jesus, that also means we should be faithful servants in the Lord's house as well. When the Lord speaks of us, he should be able to say, my son or my daughter is a, is a faithful servant in all my house. It shouldn't be that God has to close rooms off to us or restrict our access because we're untrustworthy or unwilling to do the work and go further with the Lord and demonstrate the proper maturity that is required for these higher positions that's what happened with the people with the servants that received the talents one was faithful with all that the master gave him he had the 10 and brought 10 more and got one more at the end there was one that was faithful but not as much so he had limited access there was a restriction on how far he went and he had five he gained five more so he had a total of 10 and then there was one that was just not faithful at, and try to make it sound like he was and the one that he had was given to the one with 10 and as we discussed in the discussing the word episode the parable of the 10 minas that we're doing um there were seven that didn't even show up they they just i don't know what they did but they did not they did not hold themselves to the standard so we should be the ones that are faithful in all the lord's house he shouldn't be or feel like he has to limit what we can do in him because we're untrustworthy and it's not because the Lord doesn't want us to experience the fullness of himself. But if we're not going to submit ourselves to listen to what he has to say, he he cannot give us certain things because that would pose harm to ourselves and to others around us. So the Lord is looking out for everybody, not just one person. And we should be looking out for everybody as well because we love our neighbors as we love ourselves so because we love our neighbors and we love the lord we are going to do our best to fulfill all that god has for us that way he can call us those faithful and profitable servants and we are like moses and like jesus and like all the other um heroes of faith in hebrews 11 that the lord has a good testimony of us and he's pleased to call us his sons and daughters Okay, so our our best is what we are called and instructed to be, right? Be perfect or be holy, for I am holy, right? Yes. Not not what man, natural man, likes to consider as we'll do our best, right? Which yes. typically tends to be, mm, maybe I'll do it and maybe I won't. Or and I'll try you're knowing right. that we fully knowing intend full to well. fail exactly. as soon as the opportunity presents itself and then go, see, I tried. No. Uh, yeah, I gave it my level best. No, 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 no. No, the Lord says, do it, right? Mm -hmm. Be this. Fulfill it. So I bring that up because it is important, yes, to demonstrate our faithfulness. But there's also the other, other aspect. Leaders lead by example, right? Yes. They're supposed to anyway. They don't always live up to that. But Paul here is still continuing to make the case for Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So he is saying, hey, look, he, uh, end of chapter two, right? He said he suffered being tempted, so, right? So which is why he says he's able to aid those, or he understands, depending on your translation, mm -hmm those who are tempted. And you can even look in Second Peter and talks about how righteous Lot was tormented by the environment he lived in, right? Now, I'll bring this up because it's important because he's saying Jesus lived this out. The Messiah, the Christ, Jesus, lived this out as an example for two reasons, right? One, he, well, three. One, he's better than Moses, 
right? And then he, and, right? Amen he is. To that. That's yes, what he that's is. what he's saying here in this section of scripture. There's three things he says. One, uh, it's not two. It's three. Let me correct myself. One, he's better than Moses. And he does the comparison, right? And then, and he, in that comparison, he says first and foremost, he's the creator. And then he says he is the, the the divine son or the son of the of God, right? The living God. But that's the same thing that John said, right? In the Gospel of John, the first five verses say, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God." And then he says, "All in verse three, right? Again, back to the Jesus is the Creator." It says, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So he gives you multiple reasons why Jesus is the Christ. Again, better than Moses. Moses was, faith, was faithful, all right, as he says, in what he was given, in his house. But Jesus was faithful in all the house, and it's the house that he built. Talking about the entirety of the heavens and the earth. Moses was not faithful in all of that because he was here placed on the earth, which is the choosing ground to make a choice. And yes, he was faithful in his walk before the Lord on the choosing ground, choosing the Lord above everything else. Amen. Right? So there, there is the difference. But also, he's saying... Again, about the divine sonship, right? We get to be joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. If you really study that out and get into the scriptures. But Christ is the firstborn of many brethren. Mm -hmm. So so understand that in full. Now, he's, again, still making the case to his fellow brethren, the Hebrews, or the Jewish people of the day. And it still takes is carrying over even to today. Mm-hmm. He is he is giving, if you will, the um, doctoral thesis and then some, right? With all the facts, the evidence, everything. And, and what's he doing? He's writing it from, as you pointed out, Layla, in a previous episode, all these various parts of Scripture, mostly from Psalms. But he uses 2 Samuel, he uses Isaiah, right? Yes. But most of those are from the Psalms, not even talking about, you know, I'll say the Torah, right? The the first five books of the Bible, the the law of Moses, and it's not even from the prophets. He's utilizing it from scripture from well, much of that was written by David. So another very reputable figure in their lineage, their history, and throughout scripture. Who also the Lord said, This is a man after my own heart. And and Jesus is in the direct lineage of David. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. Of King David. So so he, he here's the pedigree, here's the bona fides, here's everything that you need so that you can believe, right? He's laying that foundation of faith for his people, but and not just his people, we, right? We get to also enter in. And be joint heirs. Mm-hmm. The Gentiles, the nations, we also get to enter in. So hallelujah to that. Well, let's understand that in full of what he's set, still setting up here in these first few verses. So Charles. Yes, as you were uh, literally speaking, that the Lord is having me start at verse 1 where we see that therefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling. Um and I'll just stop there. It says partakers, and we have to understand here that he is talking to the Israelites. And what is very important here that um, Paul, that the Holy Spirit through Paul is also mentioning is the fact that when Jesus built the house, he built it for all of us. He didn't build a separate house for the Jews and say, okay, this is the only Jew house, and this is where you go. But the Lord is the master of all of them. Moses was faithful, yes, inside of the house that the Lord gave him to control over, um, meaning that he gave not control over, but he allowed him to. He was um, a judge over Israel. Yes. And, 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 and was used to deliver them. He had yes. some authority there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And how he was faithful in, inside of that. But the Lord was faithful inside of everything. That's 
something that you mentioned, Dad, mm -hmm. that when the Lord is also talking about the house, he's not just talking about what people consider the house of Israel. The house includes all humans. Jesus wasn't just there for the Jews um, at that point in time. And we see that in multiple different places. We see that when we were studying Ephesians, where he said that he was bringing together all men, meaning that he was breaking down the separation between Jews and Greeks. Essentially, that's how he phrased it. The wall it. of separation, yes. Yes. And how when we understand and consider that also is that as Jesus is perfect inside of all things, he was able to accomplish things that we can't do in our own self. And that's something that's very impo important. The Lord said, there's coming one who be like you. He didn't say, Moses, there's coming a second Moses who do as you did. <laughs> we know Moses was sinful, meaning that he was not flawless. He uh, er made an error at the rock the Mirabha? waters of mirabah yes yes he, he also misunderstood his role initially right as the deliverer of israel and yes. rose up and struck down the egyptian and then uh if you will escaped for 40 years of his life right before the lord yes. had him return to now with more understanding actually bring about and and by more understanding direct revelation from the lord right working those things that he had learned in egypt out of him right while tending the sheep, caring for them, right? Yes. To actual shepherd his people, the Lord's people, right? And deliver them out from the bondage that was in Egypt. So there, there's a lot involved in that. However, yes, he, he was not perfect. He still had to be obedient to the Lord. And yes. Get himself back in alignment with the divine order, where Christ never left the divine order. He was perfect. That's why he was the sacrificial lamb, the one without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. So he's the only one that could be the sacrificial lamb to redeem us. Yes. So just on the basis of that, and greater than Moses. Yes, Dan. And also, as we see here, that he was also talking about how he was faithful to the one who appointed him, Jesus was. He wasn't mm -hmm. doing what he wanted to do inside the moment, as you just pointing out where Moses, there was times where he did what he wanted, what he thought was the correct course of action, like when he told the Lord not to let his anger burn hot against him so he would have someone to let his anger burn against, essentially. <laughs> but we see here that when Jesus was doing everything that he was doing, he was doing it out of as the Lord wanted him to do. He wasn't doing what he felt like doing. He wasn't doing what seemed like the natural response that was provoked in the moment. He, that's not how he treated and responded. And that's something that we should be striving for as well. There's been multiple times where the Lord told me to do something that doesn't necessarily seem like I should have been doing in the moment. It would seem like, Lord, well, they've done this to me, Lord, and as my advocate's rules, um, this is how I should respond. But that's not how the Lord treated me. And he reminded me of all the various ways when my actions would have responded would have warranted a response that I did not like. Or when his abacus was <laughs> calculating <laughs> against you. Yes. Uh, it could have been, but it wasn't. And that's not how I wanted. And I didn't necessarily like that. And I felt like I was justified in what I was doing. And Lord, you're justified in sparing me. And that's how I thought about it. But what we see here is that Jesus, he wasn't taking excuses. That's something very important that, as the master of the house, Jesus wasn't saying, okay, guys, you guys got it from here and I'm going to sit back and relax. Mm -hmm. He was actively in the work doing it and showing them the example on how to actually go forward. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll say leave us with this, right? Jesus is the pattern example. Right? Always. Always. So, well, Paul is also, while setting this foundation of faith here, he's also admonishing and encouraging, I'll say his fellow brethren, but also us today, right? Both Jew and Gentile, to be, walk, move, right? Like our Lord and Savior. Saying what the Father says to say, doing what the Father says to do. Not yes. what we think it's supposed to be or look like or, or any of the above. Not what our, uh, not go after our own lusts or desires, right? Jesus, as you pointed out there, LaCharles, he said nothing of his own initiative, but only as the Father commanded him, right? 
even to the point of uh, he wouldn't have even come unless the Father had sent him. So yes. we likewise, or we should, I'll say, act in like manner. In order to do that, though, as we were just talking or in a previous episode, uh, Layla, you mentioned we have to know the Father's voice. Yes. And not just hear what he says, but then we have to apply it to our lives, be obedient to him, demonstrating our our love for him, our faith in him, and our hope, the future that is only found in him by our obedience. Yes. So we can be sons and, and daughters, of course, not excluded, but we can be sons of obedience. And that only happens if we hear his voice being led by his Holy Spirit. Yes, Dan. So... Let's pause there with that for today. And can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, the Charles. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are faithful inside of all the Lord's house, Lord, and that you are also the one who was able to accomplish everything, Lord, that us as, that us as humans were unable to do so, Lord, but that you prevailed inside of your plan, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you that you're the one who makes the plan, Lord, and that you're the one who holds the standard, Lord, for us to meet and reach, Lord, that you're the one who understands all things and is not left up to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.